Hello everyone. So today we will be discussing upon the statecraft theory given by Niccolo Machiavelli. So if you are a student of political science, then this very statecraft theory given by Niccolo Machiavelli is a very very important concept for all of you. Likewise, if you are not a student of political science, but you still like to know about the various political theories and various political ideologies, then even in that case, this very statecraft theory given by Niccolo Machiavelli will be very very important for all of you. So, before entering into the statecraft theory given by Niccolo Machiavelli, let us understand basic concept on Niccolo Machiavelli, or let us understand who is Niccolo Machiavelli and why are we studying about him and why are we studying about the theory given by him. So, Niccolo Machiavelli is a great philosopher, let's say a great Western philosopher, and he was born at Florence, Italy in 1469 AD. So, he is also called as the child of Renaissance. So, why is he called the child of Renaissance? Because during his birth, the medieval age was coming to an end and the modern age was about to begin. Since he was born at such a scenario or such a time when the medieval age was coming to an end and the modern age was starting to begin, he is also called as the child of Renaissance. Likewise, he is also called as the father of modern political science. So why is he called as the father of modern political science? Because the political thinkers before Machiavelli, that way the political thinkers during the middle medieval period thought that religion and politics are the same. They didn't distinguish between the religion and politics. But Niccolo Machiavelli was the person who distinguished between religion and politics. Due to his that very work, he is also called as the father of modern political science. Likewise, one of his very, very influential writings or one of his very, very important book is The Prince. And The Prince consists of the statecraft theory, which is the very, very important theory and about which we are going to learn today. And this statecraft theory of Niccolo Machiavelli, which has been kept in his book, The Prince, is also considered as one of the best statecraft theory till present. So, we are talking about statecraft theory, but what is really a statecraft? What do we mean by statecraft? So, statecraft means a practice about how to run a state. Statecraft consists about how to run a state, how we can run a state very, very nicely. That very theory is called as statecraft or that very term is called as statecraft. And in the statecraft theory given by Niccolo Machiavelli, he has given advices to the ruler or the prince to run a state very, very properly. So what characters must a ruler or a prince have in order to run his state very, very nicely is the main theme of the statecraft theory given by Niccolo Machiavelli. So now let's talk about the various advices that Niccolo Machiavelli has given to a ruler or a prince. And the various advices that Niccolo Machiavelli has given to a ruler or a prince is also called as its statecraft theory. So the very first characteristic, so the very first feature that a ruler must have is that a ruler must have the combination of the qualities of both a lion and a fox. That is, a ruler must have a chorus as that of a lion and he or she must have the cunningness of a fox. Force and fraud are the two main seals that a ruler can use at a proper time and proper place. So when a prince uses force, he acts like a beast and he must learn to act like two types of beasts. That is a lion and the next one is a fox. A fox is defenseless against wolves and a lion is defenseless against the traps. In other words, the lion can't defend against the traps and the fox can't defend itself from the wolves. So the prince has to play the fox to see the traps and the lion to scare off the wolves. A prince must learn to act like both the fox and the lion. He must learn like the fox how to recognize the traps 
and like the lion, he should know how to frighten of the wolves. So, the main character that a that a leader or that a ruler must have is that he must have the qualities of both the lion and also the fox. So now the next, the second feature that a ruler must have is he or she must use force ruthlessly. So what does this mean? According to Machiavelli, a man is wicked, selfish, egoistic and lacking in justice and honesty by nature. And a man is always uh, very, very selfish because he is always dissatisfied due to the excessively desires of gain. So, the prince or the king should be most powerful to rule over the selfish, egoistic, lacking in justice people. So, the method of the government must therefore be to bring such people into track to control them to fulfill their desire of protection, life and property. And the main measure how a ruler can keep them in their control is force. He advises that the ruler should use four formulas of forces that is Sam, Dham, Danda and Bhed. So if in a society men are corrupt and selfish and the law is powerless, then normal administration is not possible at all. So a superior power is essential for bringing that society into order. And force is only the way that can put all of those selfish, wicked people in order. Therefore, a ruler must use force ruthlessly is also said by Niccolo Machiavelli. So, now the third character that a leader must have is a leader must know to use the persuasion artfully. A ruler must use force that is important but sometimes the ruler must convince people artfully to gain and sustain the power by various propagandist politics. So, the next character is that a prince should always maintain a strong national army. The king must not rely on the mercenaries or the bodyguard. He should have a well-trained army of his own who must be very, very patriotic. He recommended constant military preparedness for the preservation of a state. The prince should organize a strong army to meet any internal and external threat to his power. Strong and regular army was must for the state for his own defense. So the state must try to build up its own independent, regular and faithful army. Such an army should consist of its own citizens and be prepared not only to defend its national borders but also to expand the national borders. So now, the next character that a prince must have is it's better for a prince to be loved than to be feared. So, according to Machiavelli, it is better for a prince to be feared than to be loved because a prince who is feared may be less likely to be confronted by any challenges to his authority. So, the, because the people of a control may be less likely to challenge the authority of a prince whom they fear than they whom uh, they love because they know that if they will uh, challenge the authority of a prince whom they fear, they will suffer very, very harsh punishment. But if they will challenge the authority of a prince whom they love, they may not suffer the same consequences. Therefore, Machiavelli argues that uh, it is safer for a prince to be loved than to be feared. But one very thing should be kept in uh, our thinking that a ruler should not be feared in such an extent that he is totally hated by the people living in that certain place. The prince should be feared, but he should not be feared in such an extent that the entire people hate him. So, a uh, prince, uh, so, so again, likewise, Machiavelli has also said that a skillful prince will make himself both feared and loved. But if it is not possible, a skillful prince will always try to make himself feared without making himself hated by those who are forced to submit his power. So this is this much about number five. So let's talk about the another that is do not keep much faith. So Machiavelli knew that love of flattery was the greatest weakness of the rulers which could deviate them from the right path. 
He therefore advises the rulers that the only way to guard against the danger of the flatterers was to let the men understand that to tell him the truth did not offend him. Because the greatest weakness of a prince or a ruler can be his habit of listening to his own praise. Because flattery is bound to let down a ruler or a prince and result into his downfall. And this was viewed by Machiavelli in his real life. He saw the downfall of various people also. He saw the downfall and the rise of Rome. And he knew about that uh, flattery is one of the greatest mistake, one of the greatest thing that creates the downfall of a ruler. So he therefore suggested that a prince must give flatterers at a safe distance so that the flatterers cannot influence his decisions. Machiavelli also suggested that the prince, as far as possible, should not listen to everybody because that is likely to lower his position. He should select few wise and intelligent counsels and listen to them patiently. He should not give everyone the liberty of coming nearer and closer to him. So, the next thing is that a prince must follow the policy of balance of power in international affairs. So, what does this mean? So this means that a prince should always follow the principle of divide and rule. That is, the main function of the state is the defense of the state. Or the main function, the primary duty of a ruler is saving its state or the defense of a state. And if he feels that the enemy is about to attack his country, the ruler must take the lead and destroy that certain enemy. Now the next Thing that Nicola Machiavelli is, has said that a ruler, or let's say using double standard politics. So let me just so let's describe about this. So Nicola Machiavelli is of the view that there must be double standard politics. That is, one type of politics is for the ruler, and the another politics is for the citizens or his subjects. So according to Machiavelli. He has given two types of political thinkings for, or let's say two types of things for. One is for the ruler and the next one is for the people living there. So, according to Machiavelli, uh, a ruler does not require morality because a ruler is a creator of the law and morality. Therefore, a ruler or a prince is higher or he is above both rules, moralities. A, a prince or a leader is one of the most supreme authority of a day, of a state. Therefore, a ruler has the primary duty of preserving the state. And for the purpose of preserving the state, a ruler may use the instruments of lie, conspiracy, killings and massacre, etc. Because absolute morality is neither possible nor desirable in politics. And But he has thought that regarding the subjects, or regarding the people, morality is very, very important because only the moral citizens will willingly obey the laws of the state and sacrifice their lives for the nation. Therefore, uh, regarding the ruler, it is okay if the ruler is not following the path of morality, but for the citizens or the subjects, it is very, very important to follow the path of the morality. So since Niccolo Machiavelli used two different concepts for the ruler and the people or the subjects, therefore it is also called as the double standard politics. So now as we have already discussed about the various features or various advices that Niccolo Machiavelli had given to the rulers or to a prince and which we also call as the statecraft theory of Niccolo Machiavelli. So now let us discuss about the various criticism that Niccolo Machiavelli's statecraft theory has faced. So number first thing that Niccolo Machiavelli has faced the criticism is that only force is not the weapon to rule the people because his idea that force is only the weapon to rule over the people was psychologically weak because there are various other ideas or there are various other methods which can uh, control the people and through love also we can control the people through pursuing them also uh, we can control the people therefore the concept of Machiavelli that only force is the weapon to rule over the people is wrong 
And the next thing is that Nicola Machiavelli's statecraft theory ignored individualism. It ignored the individual liberty. It ignored the individual equality. It ignored the individual justice. And it sacrificed individual for the sake of state, which should not be done. And the next thing is that Nicola Machiavelli's statecraft theory only presented one-sided views of human nature. Because in the view of Machiavelli, men are universally bad. And this is really a very one-sided view of human nature. Because he ignored the fact that much of a civilization is based on the social and the cooperative instincts of men. And men are not bad by birth. And the next thing is that uh, they should not be... So much, uh, there is so much distinguishing of morality from the politics because there should be some extent of the moral values in the politics as well. Because politics cannot be separated from morality totally. So, these all are the criticism that Nicola Machiavelli's statecraft theory has faced. So, in the case, if you get the question that discuss about the uh, statecraft theory given by Nicola, Ma Nicola Machiavelli. So you can write about the various features about features or the advices that Nicola Machiavelli has given to a ruler or a prince. Likewise, if the question asks you, also write the criticism that Nicola Machiavelli's statecraft theory has faced. Then you can write other these points also. So have a good day. Thank you.